Hey, regular expressions are kind of funny because we see things like that and just want to quit programming or regret that we even learned it. And I totally understand that because what you see here is just looking very, very ugly. And in this video, we will take a look at that because let me tell you one thing, it is not that ugly. I mean, it looks ugly, but it's actually pretty easy to understand that. So after that video, I'm sure you will. Because how cool would it be if you are the type of guy that understands these regular expressions fully and can explain them at your work? So let's get started. But first, we need to understand why do we validate data or what even is validation? Let's say we have a simple form right here and then we're just calling this submit form function and this submit form function is a server action and we get the form data here. And usually the first thing that we do in modern web development is validating the data. So we want to look if the data is okay, if it has the format that we want. So we usually use a library called Zot for that and specify a schema, a schema for validation. So the schema looks at the properties of the form, for example, name, email, and age, and just want to secure that the data is valid. What does that mean? That means like an email should be in the format of an email and a name, for example, should has at minimum two characters and for example, at maximum 20 characters or it needs to be a string and not a number. So we just want to secure that the data we get is valid and that is validation. Sometimes we need stuff that is not included into Zot. For example, for German postal codes, for date formats, for extended password rules or specific file extensions. So all that stuff that Zot is not able to do is something that we need to do with regular expressions. I showed you a regular expression right here. It looks ugly and I know that, but it's actually a very handy tool and they can actually be applied inside of Zot. So we can write something like regex here and inside of this brackets, we can provide a regex function. But how does that look? How is regular expressions actually working? And for that, we take a look at that one. And I know that looks ugly, but trust me when I say to you, it's easy. So this regular expression here is for an email. And it's a very great example to explain how the whole thing is working. So I've prepared a small sheet sheet here, and that's what we're going to use here now to explain this to you. And also on the right side, we have a small playground here to understand what's going on. The first thing we have is the basics, like the basic structure of a regular expression, which is pretty easy, just a start symbol and a end symbol. So we see here already the end symbol and we see the start symbol. And that's already just for starting and ending and has nothing to do with the regular expression itself. So you can just ignore this. Another thing at the basics is that we have this dot character. And this just means any character. So if we go with dot here on the right side and we type in anything, then you see everything is a hit. So something with a green background here is yeah, just a regular expression hit. So if I type in an H for example, then you see nothing here is a hit. But if I type some H's in here, you see they are hits. So with typing in just one character, we can just hit exactly this character. But now the problem with the point character is that it accepts everything. But what if we exactly want that .com for example, or .de, then we can escape a special character with a backsplash in front of it. So now you see nothing here is a hit, but the dot character is a hit right now. And that's for example, what we see here. So exactly at this. So because an email has some, for example, toby at gmail.com. So this dot com needs to be escaped. So this is a simple dot here. But from now on, it gets easier. Trust me, because the next thing is just groups. And yeah, the simplest group is that. And it's actually the same as a math. Sometimes you just want to group some sections. And then we have the square brackets. And those square brackets mean one thing inside of there. So if we type in square brackets A, B, C, for example, then exactly A or B or C is allowed. So if we type things, you see just A, B or C is allowed. If we then go with that symbol, everything else is allowed. So everything that is not A, B, C. So this symbol just means a not. So if we type in more here, you see it gets less and less because we specified more and more of those symbols that should be not allowed. And then we have the simple pipe symbol, which is just a or. So let's take a look at the regular expression and see where we find those groups. So let's get a green color. And for example, here we find a group. Here's a group here, here, there, there, and there and there and there. So a lot of groups here. So a lot of these symbols are just for grouping things together. No special logic. So still very easy, right? And then we have this common structures. So if you write something like from A to Z like that, you just specify characters from A to Z 
when they are capitalized. So characters that are small are not allowed. But for example, if you write A to Z in small, now everything is allowed, but not numbers, for example. You can also write 0 to 9, which is just numbers, but not letters. Or you can write things like backslash S, for example, which is just white space things. You can also do backslash D for numbers and not 0 to 9. It's the same. And you can do backslash W for every word character. So letters, no matter if capitalized or not, or numbers, or I think underscores, but not special characters. And another feature is that you can also negate them. So if you want everything that is not a white space, you can not do that, but you can instead do a capital S. So now everything is allowed that is not a white space. So if I do white space, you see nothing is happening. But if I get to a small s, then you see just the white space. So you can negate them. And yeah, with that handy information, we can paint around here and see a pretty easy thing here. So exactly that thing right here is just common behavior. Because what do we do here? We say something that is from A to Z in big, or something A to Z in small, or 0 to 9, or a point, underscore, percent, plus or minus is allowed. So if I copy and paste this right in here, you see that we can type actually everything that is a letter that is from 0 to 9, or that is a percent is allowed, plus, minus is allowed, but some things, as you see here, like comma, for example, are not allowed, or some special characters are not allowed. The problem is, you see, we always have a small gap between the things, and that's because we don't have quantifiers right now. We need to quantify a thing, and that's what the plus here is doing. The plus is actually another color, and we get to that in a point, which is a quantifier, and it means one or more. So if we type a plus behind that, you see the gaps are closed and this is now one hit. So the plus says one or more of the characters specified inside of the square bracket. But let's get back here and take a look at things that are coming after the ad. And the ad itself is actually just a simple common pattern. And then we have this part. And then we have quantifiers. And quantifiers specify how often something happens. So we have things like a star, which is zero or more. We have things like a plus, which is one or more. And we have a question mark, which is zero or one. And then we have things like n, which is, for example, five, five times. n comma is at minimum five times. And n to m is, for example, five and ten, then between five and ten times. So what we can say is, for example, here we have a quantifier, which means like you see at the end of the email, you got, for example, Toby at Gmail dot com, which is three characters. So we want at least two and we doesn't care how much they're coming, but at least we want two. So dot de would be valid, but dot t, for example, is too small. And here we have a plus, which is one or more. And here we have a plus, which is one or more. And the plus is behind those square brackets, which means one of them and then plus. So one or more. I know that sounds confusing, but once you play around with it, it gets very easy. Let me really tell you, use this tool. It's down in the description and it's pretty nice to understand how things are going on and how things are actually working. And maybe you ask yourself what else to do with regular expressions. Because, yeah, validation is one thing, but, but the reason why regular expressions are so great and so powerful is that you can do a lot more with them. You can, for example, search things in VS Code or parse things in general. There's a lot to do with regular expressions and I hope I explained this clear in this video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.